Day. National Day. We have a holiday. We are celebrating the 51, 51st National Day of United Arab Emirates. It is all. It is marked on 2nd December, where the seven cities uh, unification in one nation. All the seven emirates in one nation. Uh, so we all would like to say happy, happy, happy National Day for United Arab Emirates. Each Toastmaster club have a president, and our president is full of energy, positive, and a social butterfly. Fashionable, always available to help in the best way she can. She is a great mentor, and she lovingly gives a much needed push to new members in their Toastmasters journey to excellence. Let's all welcome our President Toastmaster, Dimi al -Kassar. Rested in me, I now declare this meeting open. An advanced happy UAE National Day to us all. Now, let me tell you this story that I recently came across. This is a story about an army officer. This was way back in 1938. He was a tall, well built army officer who had one goal in his life to become the world's best pistol shooter. Am I audible at the end? Yeah? Okay. Um, Greek master, can we have the door closed, please? So, Ketu? Thank you. Okay. So, this is a story about an army officer who was tall, well built, and he had one goal, one aim in life that was to be the world's best shoot, a pistol shooter. So, he worked hard day in, day out. He practiced, worked really, really hard just to be the world's best. This was 1938. In 1940, there were world championships, not world, there were national championships in Hungary, and he wanted to take part for that. He wanted to participate. But just a couple of months before that, and his dream was that everybody should know his name. When it comes to pistol shooting, they should know who this guy was. Okay? So he worked day in, day out. And one day during the army training, he was in a section where he had to handle the bomb. So as luck would have had it, as bad luck would have had it, he had a faulty bomb in his hand, which burst in the hand. It burst in the very hand that would make him a world champion. His dreams were shattered. Now all his dreams, he would shoot only with the right hand. So his entire dreams came crashing down below him. What would he have done in that situation? What would any of you do? Yet he had two options. One, either give up on his dreams. Two, continue. But how would he continue with his dreams? Because the very hand that he had was amputated. He didn't have that hand. So how would he continue? He used his left hand. The hand that he could not even write with. He made that hand his strong hand. And he worked hard and hard and took part in the Hungarian Olympics, which were happening at that time in 1940, and won the gold championship. Two years later, he was all ready to uh, compete in the World Olympics, again, the following one, which was happening every four years. But again, as fate would have had it, due to the World War II, that was cancelled, and he couldn't. So again, his dream was shattered. He was shaken, not once, not twice, but that did not stir him. He was shaken, not stirred. He continued. The next Olympics again was cancelled due to the consequences of the World War. Then the following one was, this was 38, 48. He was 28 at the time he was competing, but by the time it was 1948, he was 38 years old. So he was already old, you know, and all the ones who were with him were young. They were energetic, they were young, but he was old. So that was a deterrent on his side, but still that did not stop him again. He continued, 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 and guess what? He won the gold championship there as well. So what do you learn from this story? First of all, does anybody know who am I talking about? Yes, Vithyam Pashu? Karali Takas. Karali Takas, he was the Hungarian gold championship in pistol shooting. Thank you very much. What do 
did you learn from this story? Never give up. Never, give up. Never give up. What was it that kept him going? His dream. His dreams, his determination, his perseverance, his mental grit. So he was sh shaken and not stirred and that's what allowed him to keep his dreams. And we'll continue with that after I am with, done with my presentation. So for uh, the members, for the guests, welcome to the White Toastmasters Club meeting number 720. So what is Toastmasters? Toastmasters International is a non-profit educational organization which started 90 year, eight years ago on 22nd October 1924. Our headquarters are in Colorado, USA. All across 144 countries, we have 282,000 plus members and 14,749 clubs. Here in the UAE, we have 172 clubs to be exact and 3,000 plus members. So our headquarters is in Colorado, USA. Our CEO is Daniel Rex, and our international president is distinguished Toastmaster, Matt Casey. What are the benefits of joining Toastmasters? Amina, why did you join Toastmasters? To improve my communication skills. To improve what you Very good, to improve your communication skills. Yes, you. Why did you think of coming over here? Yeah, uh, I'm already Toastmasters, and it's doing my journey here. Uh, it gives confidence to speak in public and to organize on public sport. speaking, confidence. Yes, Costa. Also, storytelling. In your communication. communication, very good. Communication, storytelling. Chamnas. To meet the people, to have the relation, and uh, of course, communication. Networking, communication. Networking. So this is all that you will get over here in Toastmasters. You will improve your public speaking skills, be confident, build your leadership skills, build self-awareness, unlimited personal growth over here. You have a one-on-one -on -one mentor who will train you and make you maximize your potential. You will get peer-to-peer -peer feedback from all the members around. So this is the place to be. Now, how do we do this? In Toastmasters, we have a program called Pathways. And we have 11 pathways. So what is pathways? Pathways has five levels, which will take you through mastering your fundamentals, learning your style, building your skills, and increasing your knowledge. And how this works, we, this all is built on four competencies, which is your public speaking, all that you asked for, your interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, management, and confidence. So once you join, once you become a member, you can choose any of these pathways. Okay, so these are the 11 parts that you have, right from dynamic leadership to effective coaching, to humor, to innovative planning, leadership development, motivational strategies, persuasive influence, presentation mastery, strategic relation, team collaboration, and visionary communication. So there's a vast choice of what you want. How this ties up with what you want. For example, let's say you want to do the path on strategic relationships. You will get your core competencies of one, two, three, and five. That is public speaking, interpersonal communication, management, and confidence. So it depends on why you have come here. Are you come for public speaking? Are you come for your leadership? Are you come for communication? What have you come for? That ties up into the path that you choose. Clear? So how does it work? This is Dubai Toastmasters Club, and I am the president of the Dubai Toastmasters Club. Now, few clubs together from an area we belong to Area 20. Area 20 director is Toastmaster Feroz. Few areas together form a division. We come under Division B. Our Division B director is Distinguished Toastmaster Pragnya. Few divisions together form a district. We come under District 105. And our district director is Distinguished Toastmaster Rania. And then we have a region. Few districts together form a region. We come under Region 11. Our Region 11 director is Shabas Ali Shah, Distinguished Toastmaster, and our international president, Distinguished Toastmaster Matt Kings. This is the XCOM of the White Toastmasters Club. We call ourselves the Visionary Toastmaster Rock Stars. So that's me, the president. Then we have Toastmaster Nisha, who's the VP Education. We have Toastmaster Yulia, who's our VP Membership, who's not in today. Uh, Toastmaster Misha, our VP Public Relation, who again has some commitments today. Uh, Toastmaster Api, our treasurer who's traveling. Toastmaster Santosh, our secretary. Hello. And Toastmaster Saleh, who we just saw running around over here, our sergeant. <laughs> so the Dubai Toastmasters Club 
has a legacy of 26 years. We are a 26 year old club, the first club in Dubai, the second in UAE, the first being in Abu Dhabi in UAE. And we have a great mix of our veterans, our stalwarts, and new members such as Yana. Our membership fee is 750 for one year and 450 for six months and a one-time registration fee of 75. Guest fees are 25 per meeting. This is our founder, Dr. Ralph C. Spedley, and we believe in this. This is our learning mantra, that we learn best in moments of enjoyment. And you will see that in this meeting, and these pictures also depict all the fun that we have over here, learning and enjoying at the same time. Now we have a new member, a new addition to our family, and that is Toastmaster Vikas Jalan. Now I'd like to call a few guests, and uh, what you will have to tell me over here is your name, what you do, your profession, how did you know about this meeting, and your expectations. If you want, you can come here, or you can stand at your place and say. Um. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Marwan Mehat. I'm a, a coach. I manage a coaching business here in the UAE. Uh, how did I know about this meeting? From uh, attending last last time. So I was here uh, last Monday, and uh, I was intrigued to uh, attend again. My expectations to uh, explore what the theme is all about and how can we get the education and entertainment within the team of the so that's interesting. So welcome, Maram. Welcome. welcome. Professor? Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Constantino Spagnoletti. Uh, my profession, I would say easily, I'm an entrepreneur, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did I come to know Iliana? Uh, we were speaking uh, with Iliana said that the last time she was attending, because she found inspiration, so I began to learn more about um, Your expectation, um, I usually don't like to build expectation. <laughs> they put pressure. Yeah. So That's a good approach. I'm here to enjoy. Well, I hope you find your inspiration and welcome, Costa. Thank you. Thank you. Shamnas. Hi, everyone. My name is Shamnas. Uh, I'm working as a business consultant who was to assist uh, setting up the companies. And uh, I came here because of Mafasa. She gave me some impression about this. Expectation, of course, uh, meet all and uh, have a uh, good view all. all. Welcome, Shamnas. Welcome to the Bay First Master's Club. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm a sales manager in a technology company. I came to know about this actually yesterday. I did the uh, first masters. I reached out to you, and you told me come tomorrow. So that was uh, perfect. I am here to um, to practice to improve my communication skills. My goal is to do a TED talk at some some day. So I think uh, this is the only platform in Dubai that allows you to do so. So I'm very excited about this and uh, looking forward to being part of this. Welcome, uh, Edmund, and this is the Serena membership. You have to meet her after the meeting to become a member. I will. Okay, yes. Definitely. And can we have one last one, the lady behind, and the rest I'll call later. Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Shilpa. I'm a housemaker, and yeah, my husband told me, actually, he's been coming here past one month, and literally, he's... And you wanted to take what he's up. <laughs> 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 one of the reasons, like, he's coming at 10 o'clock, very late. <laughs> <laughs> That's only the reason. Yeah, and what I expect. Let's see a new side of me. I want to see, like once I join. Okay, what what can I, what else I can achieve? Okay, I hope you both get to see each other's side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Edmund. Okay. Sure, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Welcome, and I hope you also join the lecture. 
I would love to hear from all of you guests, but in the interest of time, uh, when I'm doing my closing, I will call the rest of you all, okay? And before I move forward, I need to acknowledge our dignitaries in the house over here. First, let's give a big round of applause for distinguished Toastmaster VP, who is the stalwart of our club. Then we have a deep tack, you know, that is above the division level champion over here. Our champion speaker, he's a champion speaker, distinguished Toastmaster Hashem Ali. <laughs> Past President Toastmaster Bosco there. And past President Toastmaster Sandeep. Please come and have a seat. I know you all are late, but you can come and have a seat. And uh, yeah, once again, welcome to all of you. And now, every meeting, there is a Toastmaster of the day. Who is a Toastmaster of the day? So this Toastmaster is the host of the day who will take you, a genial host, who will take you through the entire meeting. And to make it interesting, we have a theme. Today's theme is shaken, not stirred. And our TMOD is someone who is a Toastmaster since 2013. He was the past Division I director, 20 years in the learning world, carving his own niche, trained across 28 countries, master trainer, blah, 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 master practitioner. He has so many titles about him. Now, why I am there in this picture, I'm not the Toastmaster of the day. He is the Toastmaster. I'm the James Bond girl. The Bond girl over <laughs> today supplementing him. So put your hands together. Give a round of applause to our Toastmaster of the day. Michelle, good evening. Good evening. How many of you all have watched James Bond movies before? <laughs> all right, brilliant. So my parents told me that my first movie ever in my life was a James Bond movie. Apparently, it was For Your Eyes Only. So For Your Eyes Only released in the year 1982, and that's that's when I was four years old. I wouldn't have made noise while going into the theater. And I can tell you from that day onward, James Bond has been my favorite. Star cast and in terms of movies, there's one thing that, that, that put me off last year was when No Time to Die released. So I was itching to go to the theatre. And I saw this review on BBC, so I was constantly following it and I knew that they are going to be launching it in the United States. So I saw the review and I saw in the end that it said, in the end, James Bond just stands and there is a missile that attacks the facility. And I never watched that movie ever again. That's the amount of favor, that's the amount of love I have for that character. So today I'm going to share some things about that character. I've researched and I'll give you those things which you would never even have thought of about this particular character, James Bond. Are you ready with me to come on the journey? Yes. yes. All right. So let's get the first one going. So usually, how do James Bond movies start? So we have that very... He's just retired. He's just retired. Now, can anybody tell me? So let me put this question across. And did you want to share that trivia, DV? Else I'll share that. Yes. No, read it. It's for us. Okay, so let's put it this way. The first four movies, who was the actor? It was an American before Sean Connery. Yeah, of course. We're not talking of the school. Uh, sure. hmm. So starting with. Dr. No onwards, there are four movies. The barrel scene that you saw, now it is the James Bond who acts. But those days, there are somebody by name Bill Simpson who did that role. So if you really want to go and see it, try and look at the trailer of Dr. No. Go and watch the trailer of Thunderball. You will see that it is Bob Simpson and not Sean Connery who walks in. That's number one. Number two, very unique. There is a movie by name on her Majesty's Secret Service. And they had one actor by name? George Lazenby. Absolutely right, George Lazenby. He does something unique in the battle 
scene. Get, can anybody guess? It is the only scene in which James Bond goes on on his knees to shoot. The only movie. Some unique things. Good. So that's a little bit about the barrels. Now, this music that you hear is not originally what was planned for. We'll share that a little later after the break. Right? Good. Let's go to the next one. Does anybody know James Bond's age? How old should this character have been? How many of you all have, have actually believed James Bond is a heartthrob? <laughs> he actually have a heartbreaker. He's supposed to be 69 years of age. Still looks the same. Now this character that you see here, the design or the face that is drawn was originally what Ian Fleming actually wrote in the books. books. So if you notice, whether it is Sir Sean Connery or Sir Roger Moore or Timothy Dalton or George Lazenby or if it would be Piers Brosnan or Dan Daniel Craig, they all need to have those characteristics else they fail the audition. So looks is primary. So we have question. I'll come to one more after this. You have more. Good. So now we have the next one. Who created James Bond? Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming. We all know Ian Fleming. So that's Ian Fleming there holding Casino Royale, which happened to be the first James Bond movie. My question to you, how many of these movies actually has been authored by Ian Fleming? Any guesses? None. Six. That's not true. <laughs> that ain't true. Five. Ten. Closer. Twelve. Nine. Closer. Now you're going to give me your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's 15. Now, the movies are going to be read out by DV for you. Which are they? There you have it. These are the ones that he's authored. Other than these, all the ones are made by somebody else or written by somebody else. Casino Royale, Live and Let Live. Live and Let Die. Live and Let Die, sorry. Moonraker, <laughs> Diamonds Are Forever, From Russia With Love, Dr. No, Goldfinger, For Your Eyes Only, Thunderball, The Spy Who Loved Me, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, You Live Only Twice, The Man With The Golden Gun, Octopussy, and The Living Daylights. So these are the movies. Unbelievable. The other movies were not written by him. Some trivia stuff. Okay, good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, we usually have two things that we need to do. First thing is there are no changes on the agenda, and we have something that we learn at Toastmasters every day. And that's going to be something known as the word of the day. We add a word to your lexicon, to your dictionary, so that you can improve your communication skills. So for the word of the day, like to introduce first. For the word of the day, we have a new baby on our blog who's just joined about less than a month ago. Uh, for her, now what the question that was asked by our Toastmaster of the day was what comes to their mind when they think about James Bond. And what she said was, James Bond has the confidence, the danger, and the charisma you just can't resist. Put your hands together for our word master, Toastmaster, Yana Morton. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Toastmasters and guests, can everyone hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, when I was choosing the word for today's meeting, I was collaborating with our dear Toastmaster Nisha. I have to give her credit for helping me out because it wasn't easy. And before I will reveal the word, I would like to show you this picture and ask you, what could my word be? It's a noun. Treasure. How? Treasure. Treasure? No. Too easy. <laughs> Checks. Nice try. No. Outcast. My word is. Do I need this? Yeah. Yes. I think really? At the back, people. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Excellent. 
So, swashbuckler. The original sense of swashbuckler was swaggering, bravo, or ruffian, or braggart. And the Oxford English Dictionary says that it was first used in 1560. Swashbuckler is a combination of two words, swash, which is to swagger with drawn sword, and buckler, a, a small shield that was gripped on the fist. The synonyms are charlatan, daredevil, hero, adventurer, hughead, or harum's carum. And I would like to encourage all of you today, especially the speakers, to use this word in your speeches. Okay. And for some of you brave here, I would like to ask if you want to use a sentence with this word. Errol Flynn was Hollywood's classic swashbuckler. Beautiful. Thank you. Who else is brave? Gorgeous. Daniel Craig, Daniel Craig puts up a swashbuckling performance when he comes on stage on mm -hmm. James Bond. Beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Oh. Who else is brave? Beautiful. So let's everyone here try to say the word loud. Swashbuckler. Once more. Swashbuckler. Beautiful. And before I leave the stage, I would like to use my own sentence. There is a swashbuckler between us. It's a Toastmaster Santosh. <laughs> because when he speaks, but he's on the stage, he uses his body language <laughs> as just absolutely daring swashbuckler. So big applause to him. So, ladies and gentlemen, just let me. I'm not as good as James Bond when it comes to IT for me. IT is it? Still, I'll just get on to my slides. All right. So here we are. So the next one. Of course. So we what we did was we asked some of these Toastmasters as to what they think. What comes to their mind when you say James Bond? So we asked uh, Sergeant at Arms, Toastmaster Saleh, what comes to your mind when you say Toast, when you say James Bond? Can anybody take a guess what would have been his answer? Girls. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful actresses. Pippi Venon, I wish I could give you a chocolate. <laughs> Saleh, you have set a trend for yourself, my dear friend. Swashbuckler, you. <laughs> All right, let's go further. Now, so here's the next one. Movies till date. Anyone? How many movies till date have been made on James Bond? I gave the answer a little while earlier. 20. 15. Y'all are not listening. 22. Very poor listeners. 20. 25. 25. That's what. That's trying to be politically correct. Now, 25 is, is what is officially James Bond. But Bob had put up something. Bob, you said something a little earlier. There was an American who... Absolutely yeah. right. Now, the actual ones are these, which we all know. But there are two that released in the midst of all of this. So, 1962, you had one movie. And 1963, you had a spoof. That is the original Casino Royale. Then, they wanted to bring back Sean Connery in the 1980s. And they tried launching him with Never Say Never Again. So both of these are not James Bond movies, despite the fact that it follows the theme of James Bond. He's called 007 and not James of Mr. Bond in the movie. Good. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Interesting as of now? Yes. yes. Okay. Let's go further. Now, the first James Bond movie? Doctor No. Dr. No. Okay. What's the trivia there? Do we have a trivia there? <laughs> Divi has got something for us. She's, she's done a good old research. Divi should read that for us. So do you know that the introduction of Honey Rider became so famous? Do you know who's Honey Rider, right? The protagonist in the movie. Yes. Ursula Andress became, famous, became so famous that it was again replicated to introduce Jinx. In which movie? <clears throat> Jinx. Jinx was the character in which movie? Very close. 
Close. Trust me, close. Yeah? In the James Bond. The yes, James Bond. It's a Pierce Brosnan movie. That's right. The world is not enough. Close. Die another, another day. day. Die another day. Absolutely right. So if you see things coming out from the from the sea after taking a shower, mm. or after taking a, a nice dip, that was actually there in Dr. No. You're not going to show some like video. I wish I could. I kept taboo in mind. <laughs> I kept taboo in mind. I knew I would I would actually get picked up by the president. This politics actually. <laughs> no, no, it's not pops. Come on. <laughs> Good. Now here we come into our next section, which happens to be... Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on. Okay. So here we have our next section, which is going to be the prepared speeches. So what are prepared speeches? So you saw those parts, right? There were 11 parts there. Now each of these parts have a particular objective to be met. So you just cannot come and speak. We are not politicians here whom people give time for us to speak and not have any results. So we have, we value time and we have value objectives. So Every project has got a particular objective, and today some speakers are going to be having some objectives placed on which they're going to be delivering speeches. That's, that's prepared speeches. So we have two prepared speeches for, for the evening, and if I could ask David to introduce the two speakers. Before that, the evaluators will evaluate. We will call the evaluator first. Uh, let's call our first evaluator, Toastmaster Amina, to read the objectives of our first speaker, who I will introduce in a bit. The purpose of this speech is to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to pre present a well-organized speech on any topic. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Meena. So let's invite our next speaker, the swashbuckler of Toastmasters. So I want to encourage all of you all to continue using this word, okay? And each time somebody uses the word, give them a round of applause for remembering and using it, okay? So our next, our first speaker is Toastmaster Kesava, and when we asked him what does he remember of when he sees James Bond movie, he said he's amazing technology in Aston Martin. So put your hands together for speaker number one, Toastmaster Kesava. Hi. So everybody has their own journey and everybody has their own path. So that's a story which I wanted to tell you. Because exactly in 2012, I had a decision. I had to go to Singapore for my undergrad or go to US. Both were flexible. I liked both the places I wanted to go and enjoy. But I wanted to stay closer to home. So do I travel? that 10 hours where I get to visit every six months or one year? Or do I go to a country which is close to my hometown or in the country India, where it is only three hours flight? Obviously, my answer was Singapore. And every year from 2012 to 2016, until my graduation, or until I graduated, I traveled six times in a year. So every two months, I used to travel home. So there was a point my mother used to say, do you stay in Singapore or study or are you staying here? So there were many people who got confused saying that, hey, are you studying in India or outside? So like how we have different paths chosen, I chose that. And Singapore is a place which I love a lot. So there were many uh, great food from $2 to $10. And also I could have a person eat on frog legs, but I didn't try. It was my friend who tried, so I had to stay on the other table. So there were some many crazy ideas and many things. So here, so this is when I choose the place. So I chose a pretty good place where I could travel a lot. And like how Dubai is a hub, Singapore is also a hub for many places. So here, this is when I went. So here, my topic was far east to the east of Singapore. So there was one place which I wanted to travel because I like to have local cuisine, local food. 
So there is one small place, it's called Pulau Ubin. So it is that small island which is over there. To go there, it, you don't need some fancy boats or anything. So you need to take a boat or ride. And it's a ferry what it goes over there. So it's a small two dollars from close to an island from Singapore over there, from this area. So this is like around 20 minutes journey. So like how you have Abras over here. So it's the same thing over there. So here, what is that island? You might be thinking, hey, it's some destination, a fancy place. No, that was used to be a quarry. So that's a granite quarry in 1930. So you could see why I chose this place, like how each is having a journey I wanted to choose. So that's actually a quarry in 1930 used for granites and all that. But after 1930, the government of Singapore said that, hey, no, please leave the land alone. So that was a decision made by Singapore. And now I'll show you the journey of this place of how it came across. So as I said, you need to travel by uh, ship boats and everything. So this was the old boats, which they still use it to travel to it. And over there, you don't have electrical, you don't have vehicles, you don't have nothing. So this is like a small adventure parks, which made where you can rent a local cycles or you can go for trekkings. So these were the only local transport you wanted to go. And it's around 100 uh, area uh, hectares where you can travel a lot. And as soon as you travel, this is the thing you have it over here. So these are some pictures which are taken from my journey. So wherever I didn't take, you'll have some uh, captions over there. So that's how it is. So you might be wondering, so what is the place where I visited? So before I wanted to show you, how many of you know what actually a quarry is? So any movies where you see that there's a lot of black soil, where you could see smoke, dust and everything. But with a government decision after 1930, this is where the place has been transformed into. So over there, I just wanted to show you two places where it was. So one is called Tejasvi Tower and Mangalore Broadway. So this is what has been built over there. And accidentally, I have a childish mentality. So I calculated the number of steps. There was exactly 120, which I couldn't believe. I had to Google, and Google confirmed me that I was good. So that's how it was there. So this was done around uh, 2014, where I took a picture of it. And you can see, as soon as you go to the top of that tower, you could see a small island over here. This is Malaysia. So from here, from being in one country, you could see other country. So that was a Malaysian border where you could see over there. So this was one of the places where I visited. Like Before that, I wanted to show you how this came across. You might be saying, hey, this is greenery. But you could see there are many more. So as I said, there's one more place which I visited in that. This is a small island what we have over here. So the name is called Balai Kwali. So now you see that beautiful water, uh, trees and soil. But if you imagine the old quarry, how it looks like. So this is what happened after 1930, an initiative by government made to this. And here you might be thinking, hey, do you have more people or others? No, there are only 100 localites who stay. You might see a modern country like Singapore, but here still they have, you have those old huts, houses, or even tents, or which are made out of wood. And over here, my fancy thing was I rented out a cycle to go over there and I did hiking. And there was one time that, not one time, so there, have you seen fishing with that stick? I tried. I couldn't catch a fish. So I had to go back, buy a fish and eat. So that's how it is. There were few local experiences where I had and I get to enjoy. So that's how it is. So... Obviously, so this is from one of the trip where you see, this is the greenery you could see. So you could see when we tried to have the greenery, so it was around 80 feet down the ground where we had to, we couldn't see. So this is what is what the, from 1930, from the initiative by government made into a beautiful greenery. And it could be a left alone. It's, it took a journey of around 70 to 80 plus years. This year is the 90th year where the then said the Malaysian government or local government saying, hey, leave the land alone. So this is what we have in terms of journeys where you could have. So this is one saying that like how I have my journey from India to choose Singapore to go for my undergrad. This is the journey of this island coming from nothing to something. And here there are many people who travel across many places. So 
you might be wondering like how you ask a question so you'll be saying when we ask a question there'll be people looking at each other so this is something which i wanted to ask at the end i went to singapore but is singapore a country or the city because every country has a city so leaving it ambiguity to over here so wanted to say what it is so it's up to you to think that's it thank you Thank you very much, Toastmaster Kesava. And uh, we'll take 30 seconds to give feedback to the speaker. You can either write your feedback on a piece of paper or send him a message or note it down and during the break you can give him. So just take 30 seconds, collect your thoughts and write down the feedback for him. Can you see me? Yes. But then the blue. <laughs> 30 seconds up? Okay. Now moving on to the next speaker. Let me call his evaluator first. Distinguished Toastmaster VP to read the objectives. The purpose statement of the speaker is uh, for the member to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring uh, and also for the member to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege. All the best to the speaker. Time. Thank you so much. Time, time, is, time is 5 to 7 minutes. 5 to 7 minutes. Okay, so let's welcome our next speaker, Toastmaster Santosh, who Yana has already confirmed as the swashbuckler of the Dubai Toastmasters Club. Now, when asked him, what does James Bond mean or what comes to his mind? He said he was always confused about who the real, real James Bond is. And he hopes to know today after the session by Toastmaster Hari Haranai. Welcome, Thank Toastmaster you. Santosh, and over to you. <coughs> this is the post, right? Yes. Okay. I lied to someone once. Only once in my life. I hope you believe me. No. <laughs> I just to come out from an important meeting and someone had given me constructive feedback. Someone has been consistently giving me piece of advices. Someone is giving me wealth of opportunities. Who is that someone? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce that that someone is my newest mentor. And I'm privileged to be the protege of that mentor. I don't want to reveal the name at this moment. Let the power, let the moral of my speech talks about the name. I know that you're curious to know the name. Let the curiosity be there for some time. How many of you are here mentors? Yeah, I just want to ask that question. Right, okay. So I see there's a mix of mentors and mentors in this room. Some time back, I mean, I would say long time back, you know, when I was studying, in grade eight, one of my teachers, Sunita Rai, she <coughs> told me about the origin of mentor. She was explaining to the class about that, and I, it was a very interesting thing which I want to share with you. She explained that the mentor actually is a is a character in one of the famous poems, the Odyssey. And in that poem, the king Odysseus, when he had gone for a war, he entrusted his friend named Mentor to take care of his child till he matches. And he took care of that child very well. That's how the name renowned. <coughs> and Madam Sunita Rai gave me the opportunity, Santosh, can you take care of the class? I said, willingly, I accept as an opportunity. And I started monitoring without realizing exactly how to do it. <coughs> and I was holding a stick and watching them what they're doing it. And if one of the students is a mischievous, then I go back to teacher and complain about that. I was beaten off by a couple of members, classmates. So the perception about the mentors of us bit negative. I grew up watching Orkut, Facebook, Yahoo Messenger, Twitter, and every prominent leaders in the social media start liking and following up with the intention that one fine day I'll get connected. I will have one-on-one -on -one with them. But unfortunately, the experience was not great. And I was asking myself, 
Santosh, when can you have a mentor? The whole world has mentors. All the prominent leaders have got a mentor. Do you know who's the mentor for Mark, the founder of Facebook? Anybody? Steve Jobs. Absolutely. Sachin tried to look at the cricketer, had a mentor, Sunil Gavaskar. Bill Gates, too, had a mentor. Anyone? Perfect. Absolutely, Warren Buffett. So everyone got a mentor, so that means I should also have a mentor. I'm a simple human being with three goals, three aspirations in my life. To be a great person, to enhance, to evolve in my career, and third is to be a great public speaker. <coughs> My parents taught me how to be a great person, and they are bringing the best out of me. They're doing their best. I really thank my parents for that. A few years back, I was a bit isolated in my job. I didn't see the growth. You know, I was, I don't know what's really happening yet. Someone's watching me. Someone's kept an eye on me. And that someone came to me once and asked me, Santosh, what's the problem? What's bothering you? And I looked at him. I I saw sparks in him. And I told him that I'm having a couple of issues. I feel that I'm isolated, I'm not growing. A lot of <coughs> guidance I got it. And some of the guidance are, Santosh, why don't you try something new? Try some innovative way to enhance your skill. Show that to the limelight, show that to the world. I started working on blogs and research in my career. I'm a data analytics professional. And because of all this, what happened is, I started progress, progressing in my career. It worked. I felt like I'm under the umbrella and somebody is giving me guidance and there is a support in that umbrella, under the umbrella. I could define the mentorship clearly now. And that's how virtue of looking for further mentors. Now my third goal is to be a great public speaker. I ventured in it of Toastmasters, but Toastmasters alone is enough. As we mentioned, we need to have mentors as well. So by now, I think you would be able to know who my mentors is. Let me ask this question to you. How many of you had a chance to review the agenda clearly? You had it right? Okay, so let me spill the beans. It's none other than our great Devi, the president of the club. She bestowed with the position of protege. I'm so thankful from the bottom of my heart. All the opportunities she gave it to me. And the overall exercise, what I learned is a mentor is someone who's not ahead of you, rather who walks along with you, who bring the best out of you, who give you a lot of hopes, give you a lot of opportunities, gives you advices. And in simple word of Ophira Wilfrey, a mentor is someone who allows you to Bring your hope inside yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, my protege Toastmaster Santosh. And let's give 30 seconds for you all to give feedback. Gather your thoughts, write down the feedback. You can either give it to him by a message or a chit, or during the break, you can give him your feedback. Timer, let me know once 30 seconds are up. the longest 30 seconds I've seen. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And let's move on to the timer now. Our timer is Toastmaster Bob, okay, another swashbuckler in the White Toastmasters Club. When asked him what does James Bond remind him of, he said when he was young, he was taken by his older, bigger sister to Thunderball. In the beginning, he didn't understand what was happening, but later when he saw, he was thunderstruck by the, by the character flying in a jet yeah? Jetpack. Jet yeah. I couldn't understand my handwriting now. <laughs> In a jetpack. And after that, we see all James Bond's movies. So put your hands together for our timer today, Toastmaster Bob. Our first speaker, Speaker Kasava, went for 7 minutes and 19 seconds. 
Toastmaster Santosh swashed his buckler all the way through the five minutes and 57 seconds. Therefore, both speakers are qualified. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Bob. And uh, can we have the polls, the voting polls? All the Toastmasters in the group chat, you will get a code. Please link, click on that link and vote for the best speaker for today. And this is restricted only for the Toastmasters. The, code the codes are here all around. The Menti code, go to www.menti.com. You have the code around over here. Put that code in and vote for the best speaker. Voting for the speaker is only for Toastmasters. We'll have table topics later where everybody can vote. So we are getting the votes. Are you able to vote, Toastmasters? Yeah? <clears throat> can somebody confirm if they are able to vote or no? Yes. You can yes. vote, right? Toastmasters can vote. Okay, great. Now moving on, um, I'll hand over to Toastmaster Hari to take you through the remaining. We have a break. Yes. The agenda says that we have a break. So we get to the... <laughs> But I'm standing <laughs> on the main highway. No, no, no. Yeah, no, any point, it will be two, three thousand. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Because there are a few people. My wife had a. Like an incentive trip. Okay. So it was like for both of us. Ah. But last minute I decided. Everything I didn't is recorded. Everything is recorded. Nah, Everything because is I recorded. said that for my daughter. Ah. Everything is recorded. So what I did, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to say. I said this early. Oh, I got it. So this, is this is good for you. Yeah. Yeah. So is it different than in Canada? Yes, actually it is. It's a little bit different. Smile. <laughs> Right? Okay. Like, just oh, the, the feedback. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it's not evaluation. It's feedback. You know. 
ಅದೇ ಅದೇ ಚಕ್ಕಿದೆ ಕಾಪಿ ಇದೆ on the break that there's something unique with this with this music and i asked you to listen to it as well do you know or did you know that this music was inspired or let us ask let me ask who would have inspired this music who would have been the inspiration for this music which part of the world india 
Hmm. So, Who said no, that? doesn't sound good. Absolutely right. Seriously? Yes. Yeah. Oh, what's so, John question? Barry, who was given the job of, of creating the music for James Bond, is in Mumbai on the streets. And in the 1960s, you had a lot of snake charmers. So, he's listening to this tune on the street, which is played on the, on that, I don't know what you call it. Uh, the, the instrument that, that they blow it. Saxophone? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> the snake chama. Like he comes home and plays it on his flute. And that's how the music gets created. It's actually originated somewhere in India. Shocking but fact. Yeah, Good. Let's go further. Okay. How many actors have acted as James Bond? Six. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. You don't get points for that. <laughs> but there's some trivia here. Now, these are the years that they acted and the number of movies. So if you see Sir Roger Moore, yeah, has done the highest number of movies. He's said to be those among those James Bond actors who is a lovey-dovey type of a James Bond. He hated guns in real life. And the most aggressive James Bond is said to be Piers Brosnan. He's got the highest number of kills on screen. Good. Now, there is something about this, this particular gentleman here, George Lazenby. Does anybody know a little bit about this person? He's an Australian, that's correct. Anything I wasn't else? born then. Ah, you're not born then. I never <laughs> not, neither do was I. George Lazenby used to work in a car showroom. And he got to know that James Bond audition is, uh, auditions are happening because Sir Sean Connery gave it up in the middle. So what does he do? He puts all the savings and buys an Armani suit because those days Armani used to suit the gentleman, uh, the gentleman James Bond. And he buys a Rolex watch which is used by James Bond and goes for the audition. Apparently, of course, he's been cited by... Alberto Boris Lee a little earlier. So they know that this gentleman does some small time acting in in commercials. And that's how you have a car cleaner who also became a James Bond. <laughs> Only looks, I told you. That's why if you see his movie, you would see zero acting. And that's why his movie bombed. Anyways, we'll get into that right at the end of this, of this, why that movie more. Good. Now, the next one. What's the cover name for James Bond's organization? Anyone? Okay, so who M does James Bond work for? MI6. MI6. What's the cover name? So, MI6. So, that is MI6. British intelligence, In right? Cover name. Not, not Salem. British intelligence. Exports. Very close. Uh, what is Very close. Born. It's this. Universal, Universal Exports. Exports. <laughs> now, DV, you tell me which are the movies where Universal Exports has been put up. In fact, it doesn't come in all the movies. It's come only in 10 movies. And we'll get the names there. Let's ask the audience. Any guesses? Which would be the movies? movies? Of course, there is one recent one where he says Universal Exports. Among in the last about nine years, that's eight the years. First one, Doctor No. Quantum of yes. Solace. Yep. Doctor No is one. Quantum of Solace. That's very. That's absolutely right. Quantum, Sol Quantum, Quantum of, of Solace. Solace. Very good. Come on, James Bond fans. From Russia with love. Russia with love. Very good. Um, he's Google searched. Die another day. <laughs> no, they just the Die first one. Day. So he must have yeah. said it there. Yeah. Die another day. Very good. Come on, come on. Bob and Amina. <laughs> uh, trying to think of the same thing. You said true, Thunderball. For your eyes only, yes. I think they know it all. Yeah. Good. So these are those, those movies where he actually presents a visiting card saying Universal Exports. That's his cover name. Good. Before we go further, we have something that's going to take us into the next leg of this program, which is the education session. We have, uh, as rightly put by our president, D.V., and we have an accomplished speaker in Toastmasters who's reached possibly the one of the highest levels of public speaking when it comes to Toastmasters. In fact, he's been a DTAC champion since the last, what, four years? Three years. Three years. In fact, I am, he and I had joined Toastmasters somewhere at the same time. 
and I must tell you that he's a dear friend of mine, an extremely close friend, and we share some fantastic moments together for the introduction. Okay, so Toastmaster Hari has already told you about him and he is a champion and we couldn't get a better person but him to take you through this education session. Now when asked about him, when asked him about what he thinks about James Bond, he said he is James Bond. So put your hands together for distinguished host master Why he puts that up? I didn't actually say that. <laughs> My actual yeah. answer was, uh, I am an IT geek, so I like the gadgets. Yes. Uh, the, the pen which explodes, yeah, <laughs> and the uh, the Ericsson phone with which he controls that car. I thought those were the reasons. Cool ones. Cool ones. All right. So, okay, thank you for revealing my letter for straight away. Right. So, I'm going to talk to you today, although the agenda says international speech, what we're going to talk about is the biggest challenge that I ever faced in my life. And that was a birthday cake for my little girl. This should be a walk in the park. Go to the bakery, order a cake, go home. That's it, just three steps. Sometimes the James Bond inside of you jumps out, right? I decided to bake the cake. Wow. And to make it worse, I actually announced this to my wife. Now you should know something about my cooking. My cooking is fam famous in seven continents. There's a huge group of people who actually enjoy my cooking. They're called medical insurers. <laughs> I'm responsible for health crisis in many countries. In fact, the last time I decided to cook my favorite biryani, I invited five of my friends over. Yeah, I got the recipe from mom. I made it exactly like that. And I served it with pride to my five friends, yeah? Three of them are not my friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the other two became vegetarians. <laughs> so you can just guess what a challenge it would be for me to bake a cake for my daughter. Now the first thing is, what flavor of cake would she like? Now, my male brain understands just three flavors. Vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Yeah, strawberry. Thank you for helping me out. I was losing it there. That's all I could understand. But apparently, she knew 20 other ones. And the ones that she said, I can't even pronounce. So this is definitely going to be a challenge. Now, this is the same thing that happens when you select a topic for your speech. There are 100 things that you want to speak about. Not necessarily what your audience would like to hear, is it? Now, I'm going to segregate this into three parts. The first part is topics that you know about, that you are competent to speak about. This may be related to your work, uh, something that you have done in your life, some experience you have had, so you're competent to speak about it. Now, I'm an IT person, like I said earlier. I'd like to speak to you all today about um, cloud computing for the next 45 minutes. I don't think they'll pay you enough to keep you here in the hall. The sergeant at would have to be a bodybuilder to lock you in. That's apparently not going to work. The second segment is topics that you love. Maybe some passion that you have. Uh, the Dubai Marathon, for example. Dubai Run, for example. You can see how healthy I am. Right? Yeah. The Dubai Run, for example, or trekking or traveling. These could be things that you like. Not necessary that your audience would like it either. So there you have the third segment, which is what the audience, you think the audience would like. And where these three meet is probably where your next speech topic lies. So I have these concentric circles over here. Topics that you know, topics that you love, and topics your audience would care about. And where you can find the concentric area in between, that's where your next topic is. The exercise for you to do when you plan your next speech out is to list out all the topics that you're thinking about. Right? And on top of topics you know, topics you love, and topics your audience care about, start ticking. Where you find all three are ticked, that's a good candidate. See if you can develop that into your own speech. Right, so try this out at your next, when you're preparing for your next speech. Now just deciding what to speak about is obviously not enough. We've got the flavor, okay, my daughter's going to have some version of strawberry. Fine. The next thing that we want to be talking about is the message of your speech. 
Simple question. I know my my best my friend Hari, my my brother Hari is not here. Okay. Can anybody define communication for me? Communication. Who would like to venture? Uh, yes. Sir. Getting an idea from one head into another head. Absolutely perfect. You made my job a lot easier. Communication, quite simply, is getting a message or a point or an information from point A to point B. That's all it is. You have email. You have verbal. You have uh, media, you have all kinds of ways of getting there. However, this is in the end what communication is. Your speech is doing the same thing. You have an idea, you want your audience to receive that idea. So you've got to present it in such a way that they're going to accept it. Right? So what is the message of your speech? That's what the audience leaves with. That's what you're giving to your audience. Think of this before you start writing your speech itself. Before you put pen to paper, be clear. What am I going to write about? What's the much the audience going to get out of this? Right? It's got to be universal, obviously. It can't be something that's very personal just to you. So my message to you is plant mango seeds in your back garden. I don't think too many people would be interested in knowing about that. Right? So you want a message that is universal, that will connect with your audience, that's going to add some value to your audience. Be sure of that. Influences or changes the way the audience... It doesn't have to be something new. Because you're going to present it in your own way, and that's what's going to make it unique. The message could be the same, however, it's packaged in a new way. That's what's going to happen. Now, with every slide that I have, I'm going to give you a secret ingredient, special, just for you guys. The secret ingredient for a good international speech, one that could do well in the international speech contest, is to work hope into your message. Now, what is hope? Hope is just giving your audience a feeling that if they adopt what you're selling, that could be something better. Doesn't mean they're doing bad now, but it could be better. Simply translated, you're giving the same message that you have. Now, let me give you an example. Supposing your message is honesty is the best policy. Right? It's, it's a moral, it's an idiom, uh, it's, a, it's something standard. However, is it giving your audience something to aspire for? Maybe not. What if you rephrased it to say, the truth shall set you free? Now you're giving some action, something for the audience. If you look at world championship speeches over the last many years, all of them are working hope into their message in some form or the other. You guys know who was the world champ who is the current world champion of public speaking? This man, Mohammed something? No. Alright, Mama Ketani was uh, a few years ago. This year was Cyril Jr. Day. He had a speech about Accepting yourself. Again, it's conveying that, you know, you accept yourself with your flaws, with your greatness, whatever it is. That's giving hope. Last year's winner was Verity Price from South Africa. She had a speech about writing your own story, no matter what happens. Again, it was giving hope. Before that was my car. Uh, it's not in the victory, it's in the try. So even if you uh, struggle or face difficulties, you can still succeed if you keep trying. All, if you go back in time, go back to any of the World Championship speeches, it's always about giving hope. So the next time, when you start phrasing your message, rephrase it in such a way that it's giving hope of some sort to your audience. You all know that outside of Toastmasters, in the real world, anybody who's a motivational speaker, anybody who's giving inspiration, is providing hope. That's what they're selling. They're not selling anything else, they're selling hope. You bring that into your speech, and then that brings the inspirational aspect to what you're trying to say. Right? Takes it one notch higher. So the next time, try to work hope into your message. Let's move on. All right. So now we've got the cake, we've got we've got the flavor, we've got the message all set. Next is the recipe. Yeah. We've got to figure out what we're going to put into our cake. Now here I have a question for all of you. What do all cakes have in common? Every single cake. Flour. Flour, sugar, okay, okay. You guys are going down to a map. Let's think a little bit higher. Every cake makes you fat. <laughs> Baking soda. Baking soda, yeah, yeah. I think one of those must be this. Feel, act, and think. What is your speech going to make the audience feel? What action are they going to take after listening to you? What do you want them to think about or remember after your speech is done? Before you put pen to paper, 
decide this. What is the emotion that you want your audience to experience? Now, if you give a small speech, let's say, let's take a very common, typically given speech. Um, Time and tide waits for no man. Okay, and my story is. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to grow up with my grandmother. I used to love spending time with her. Uh, I always used to listen to her stories, visit her whenever I could. I went to college. I got a job. I couldn't travel back that often. We had COVID times. I couldn't go home. Grandma's no more. Now I miss her. This is my story. My message to everyone is: spend time with your loved ones. Right? Utilize the time. For love. That's it. What do you want the audience to feel? You want them to feel the emotion of spending or of missing their loved ones. What action do you want them to take? You want them to call up their loved ones. You want them to go and visit them next time there. What do you want them to think? You want them to think that their time is best spent with their loved ones. Right? So decide before you put pen to paper, what do you want the audience to feel? What action do you want them to take? And what do you want them to think about once your speech is done? That's the FAT. All right, moving on very quickly. The best way to convey your message is to tell a story. Stories have been the way that everything has, any information has passed since time immemorial, right? Before they had newspapers, before they had, uh, uh, you know, internet or news or media, the way news went from one place to another was through storytellers. That's how the world got to know about other people. And that's still how points are conveyed. If you're around children, you'll always find a kid come up and say, hey, daddy, tell me a story. No kid has ever come up and say, Daddy, show me a PowerPoint. <laughs> no one's ever done that. It's always been, tell me a story. And that's still the best way for you to convey your message. And you remember when we, were, when we were kids, you know, we had a... Well, my grandma was a big storyteller. And I'm sure your parents also must have shared stories with you. Uh, and all these stories had kings and queens and big kingdoms. Some had animals speaking, birds speaking, all sorts of things. None of these stories were true. We all knew that. There was only one purpose to the story. That was to get the moral into the kid. It's like cereal. There's no nutritional value to cereal. It's just to get the milk into the kid. It's just like that. Get that moral into the kid. The best way to convey your moral is through a story. And when you remember, when you convey your message, your point through a story, they remember your story, and with that they remember your message. So. That's why storytelling is still the best way to convey your message. And when you work out what you're going to do with your seven minutes, make sure you leave enough space in there to tell a story, an anecdote from your life. Your own personal incident is the best. Public knowledge is fine. However, your own personal experience is always the best way to connect with your audience. They can gain from that. Every story has characters to remember. Big, larger than life characters or small, normal characters, but they are there. Every story has either a hero or a villain, somebody or the other is there. Project those characters, be descriptive about them. Give them a position, maybe a gesture, maybe a voice, a dialogue. But in your speech, build your character up. It could be, a, it could be your uncle, it could be a teacher, a long lost friend, it could be the evil headmaster of your school, anybody. But give them a name, give them, give them a characterization. See, you know what they look like, but your audience doesn't. And your words are your opportunity to show them what that character looks like. So use that. Be similar, not superior. Now what this means is, okay, back in school, you remember there was that kid who used to sit in the front row, he used to get 102 out of 100 in every exam, <laughs> was the teacher's pet. Before any question was, I would raise their hand and they tell the answer. Yeah, you remember that kid? Nobody liked that kid. <laughs> Nobody liked that kid. All the girls went out with the guys who were at the back. Yeah. I would know. I was the kid in front. <laughs> in your speech, don't start your speech out by saying, yeah, I've got 100 marks in you know, every subject. I was a gold medalist in school. Uh, in college, I was a triple PhD in nuclear physics. Uh, me and Einstein were competing. He just had longer <laughs> hair than me. Uh, I won a gold medal in the Olympics as well. Sari has no chance today. <laughs> <laughs> I will sit back. So, you want to be the one who struggled in your speech. Show them how you came out of that struggle. Then people will connect with you. People will listen to people who are similar, not superior. 
if they wanted superior, they'd go for a class. They'd go to university. They wouldn't come to those masters. They want similar. And if you can be similar, you can connect. Reach, don't preach. Yep, I know, I know. There's a secret ingredient. Every page I promised it, it's there. The secret storytelling model is called the 5C storytelling model. If your story is three sentences or your story is five minutes, you can still use this model. The five C's are curiosity. What curiosity is, few statements or words to bring your audience into your story. Every story or common stories that we hear start with once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a boy. All of these are just bringing you into that story, right? It has nothing to do with that story. <laughs> it's just bringing you into the story. So create the curiosity. We spoke about characters to remember, absolutely necessary, build your characters, give them a personification, create that halo on stage where people can see that character. Conflict, there has to be a challenge. Now imagine a story which goes, uh, in a beautiful town, in a beautiful <coughs> village, with lots of trees and beautiful flowers and a nice river, there lived a man and a woman, and they had two children. Everything was nice. They lived happily ever after. That's the boringest story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> there has to be a challenge. If there's no challenge, there's no story. Right? So what was that conflict? What was that struggle you were going through? What was that challenge you faced? At some point in your story, there's a cure. So you, somebody advised you. You came across something in a book, a movie. Some incident happened. You got some sudden realization. You sat under a tree and boom, it hit you. But something happened. That was the cure. Be similar, not superior. You didn't discover it by yourself. You're not Newton. Only one person sat under that apple tree. You know, Newton was lucky in my opinion. You see, imagine that Newton was from where I come from, in Kerala. There are no apple trees, there are only coconut trees. He would have really understood the gravity of the situation. So there's a cure, right? And once that problem is solved, there's a change. How did you change your life? Once this happened, once you realized this, what changes did you make in your life? The changes that you made are the changes that your audience can make, right? That's how your speech connects with the audience. So remember this 5C storytelling model, easy to apply. Just make sure that your story has some parts of all of these elements. Curiosity, characters, conflict, cure, and change. All right. I thought we covered the recipe. That was the ingredients. Apparently, all right. How do we make our cake? Now, before we start this, let me ask you all a question. Those who have probably done the previous uh, competent communication manual may know it better. What are the four purposes of a speech? Speech purposes. Inform. Inform. Inspire. Inspire. Persuade. Persuade. Transform. Transform Entertain. happens. Entertain. Entertain. Absolutely. So, inform, persuade, uh, inspire, and... What was the last one? Entertain. Entertain, absolutely. Getting entertained here. All right. So these are the four speech purposes as we know it. Now, you don't have to have just one of these in your speech. What I say is for your international speech, today's world is all about user experience, right? Whether you're talking about websites, whether you're talking about mobile applications, it's about the experience that you're giving your user. What I say is your speech has to go through all four of these at different times in your speech. What I'd like to give you is a structure where you can decide which part, what happens, right? This is a typical outline. You know that every speech has an opening, a body, and a conclusion. We know this. The opening, what's, what's the purpose of the opening? Uh, anybody? Yeah, curiosity. Curiosity, yeah. There's only one purpose, to get the audience on your side, to get the audience's attention. Engage. To get, yeah, to get the audience with you. If they're with you at the beginning, they're going to stay. If they're not with you at the beginning, you pretty much lost the game already. You'll have to make a very really big comeback to get back into the game. So you want to entertain them so that they are on your side. Entertain does not mean joke. You don't have to crack a joke. If you can, it's good. However, maybe an anecdote, maybe a quotation, whatever it is. Grab the audience's attention. So you want to entertain them. You want to give them some information that's going to lead into your story. The background information that you need, uh, maybe setting the premise of what's going to come up next. Use that into your opening. Your opening is around 20% of the speech. Then you have the body of your speech where you've got your main points and you're going to support your main points with what? With your stories. Right? So you've got the point, you've got the story. And 
here you want to inform them through your story of what's going to happen or of what's happening. You're going to keep them entertained because this is a large part of your speech and you don't want to lose your audience. So touch base with them in between, keep them entertained. And towards the end of it, you're going to persuade them to accept what you're selling. Right? Whenever you say the word persuade, what I want to think of, what I want you to think of is sales pitch. That's what persuade is. You're selling something and you want your audience to accept that. That's persuasion. The closing is the last 15%. Here is where you got your profound realization. I should have done this years ago. I would have been the king of the world. Oh, that's not a James Bond, that's Titanic. All right, <laughs> whatever it is, shaken, not stirred. You put your message out and you have a call to action for your audience. Here you want to inspire, persuade and inspire. This is how you distribute these four um, speech purposes at appropriate times in your speech to get the maximum benefit out of it. All right, moving very quickly, decorating your cake. It's not enough, plain cake is not enough. My kid would throw me out. I'm not afraid of my kid, my wife would throw me out further. Decorating your cake is pivotal. That's the only way she's gonna buy that cake from you, all right? How do you decorate your speech? Foundation phrase, the phrase that pays. Is there something rhythmic that you can use in your speech? How many of you remember the famous phrase by Martin Luther King Jr.? I have a dream. I have a dream, yeah, yeah. How many of you actually heard that speech? One, two, yeah. One video, I wasn't alive. <laughs> I wasn't alive when the video was made. <laughs> so, the idea is, even though you may not have heard the speech, you still remember that phrase, I have a dream. And you still use it at different opportunities. Different people use it. That's how powerful a foundation phrase is. So if you can summarize your core message in less than nine words, add some rhythm to it, that's your foundation phrase. We have this gentleman here, Dhananjay Hetirachi, world champion of public speaking. He had a foundation phrase was, I see something in you. Okay. But I don't know what it is. <laughs> I see something in you. You may not remember his whole speech, you should remember that phrase. That's how important or good a foundation phrase is. You know, branding, this could be your brand. If you get a really good speech with a good foundation phrase, that would be your branding, right? Right for the year. <coughs> you know what's the difference between um, a speech on stage and, say, uh, an article in a magazine? No music. No music, true. <coughs> The difference is, the article you can read again and again until you get it. Mm -hmm. On stage, when you're giving a speech, you've got one shot. Either you hit it or you miss it. So you want to make sure that the audience is with you. Let me give you a simple example of writing for the year. I have a plain sentence. I was driving through Sheikh Zayed Road and I got a flat tire. That's it. I'm sorry. You. you can replace it by... I was driving through Sheikh Zayed Road, bang, I got a flat tire. Which one was better, the first or the second? The second. The second. It's the same words, just one sound word in between. So practice writing for the year. You can use the rhetoric devices, alliterations, similar sounding words, triads. I'm talking about the power of three. Next, you guys know what the power of three is? Repeating it thrice. Right? I came, I saw, I conquered. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to have a triad in every sentence in your speech. Now, come contest day, every people tend to do that. Have seven or eight triads. Too much of anything is bad. Have two or three triads in your speech. It's good. It sounds good. It gets the audience on your side. Expressions and emotions. This works two ways. One, you want to create that emotional moment on stage. So you want to create that scene where you're sucking the audience in. Write those emotions down. When you select which words to use, select the ones which get you emotional. Because if it gets your blood flowing, if it gets your emotions out, you'll be able to better project it on stage. Right? So when you select words, select ones that make you feel, which uh, bring that passion out of you, which have some connect for you. Use that to express. Props, not necessary, but good. If you can use an appropriate prop, use it. Don't use seven or eight props, this is not a circus. You're giving a speech. After the speech, nobody's going to buy your prop from you. Right? You still have to carry it all home. So use them appropriately. If it works, good. If not, leave it out. Pauses, absolutely necessary 
it's like in cricket we have a saying catches win matches pauses are when you rope in your audience into that particular moment places where pauses are critical emotional moments power statements jokes an appropriately placed pause can win or kill a joke why a joke has couple of parts right you've got the setup then you've got your you've got your premise and you've got your setup and then you've got the punchline before the punchline there needs to be a pause because that causes the misdirection right so if you miss that out you're just going to walk right through it what happens at the end of a joke hopefully people are laughing hopefully if you don't give that pause and instead you go on to the next sentence what do you think they'll do they'll stop laughing and listen to you but you want them to laugh so you need to give a pause after your joke as well use your pauses very important secret ingredient for decorating your speech audience involvement ask questions to the audience a rhetoric question where you don't need an answer and you know don't elaborate too much into details like for example if somebody asks how are you doing don't say yeah my cholesterol is high my blood pressure is also high the stock market is down i haven't got a promotion in 2 years i've got nagging kids and my wife is killing me he was just being polite by asking you right? so rhetoric question means you don't need a response give a pause and move on don't wait for somebody to stand up and give a speech there get the audience involved as far as you can either get them laughing give some gesture ask a question something or the other all right presenting your cake you've already decorated it it's all set it looks nice now you've got to give it and make her have a smile like this right open sesame the start of your speech we said earlier that the purpose of the opening is to grab the audience's attention it does not have to be as drastic as this <laughs> Although this worked and he won the world championship, Darren Tay, it does not have to be this drastic. Attention grabbing opening sets the theme of the story and it gets the audience on your side. The beginning of the speech is when they're deciding whether they should be listening to you or going back to the Instagram or WhatsApp or that important shopping list or talking to the cute guest who just walked in. All of this is happening at the beginning of your speech. You want them with you. Secret ingredient about the opening is game time is the first 30 seconds. You win this game in the first 30 seconds. If you win the first 30 seconds, everyone's on your side for the remaining six and a half minutes. All right. Moving on, closing the deal. We did the opening. The next part is the closing. Tie it to the opening. Come full circle. Give them the complete experience. Bring in your power phrase at the end. That's where it belongs. You want the audience to take this back with them. Your power phrase. Where do you close your speech? Right over here, in the center, up close with the audience, with your hands spread out. This is where you close your speech. This is where they're going to cheer for you. This is where they're going to sign you up to come back and speak the next time. What is the secret ingredient? This was your story. This was your message. This was your speech. But who was it for? It was always about the audience. Your last statement should have you or we. It should be about the audience. Give it to them. let them leave with that that's what makes your speech well connected to the audience quick summary messages that matter what should every message have oh i hope somebody was listening thank you <laughs> you want your audience to feel fat feel act and think the 5c storytelling model does anyone remember the 5c's curiosity, curiosity characters conflict cure and change perfect perfect thank goodness i was listening The four speech purposes: entertain, inform, persuade, and inspire. You decorate your speech with your language, your foundation phrase, your pauses. The opening to grab game time is the first 30 seconds. My suggestion is you write your whole speech, then come and write the opening. Okay? You write your body first, then write the closing, then write the opening. The opening could be distinct; it could just lead into your speech, but it's got to grab the audience's attention. You got to maximize that. Closing the deal right up here. If you do this, I don't guarantee you'll win the world championship. However, you could make one girl really happy. <laughs> With that, I wind up my talk and let me hand it back to the dose master. I had that question as well. I was thinking you'll ask questions. Did you actually make that cake? That's for the next humorous match. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he's got a naughty one always. <clears throat> okay, so let's get into our 
If you have got questions, I think you'll have to speak to speak to Hashim separately. That's my that's my assessment. Is that okay? Yes. So you can take your questions, Gilly, and then post people. Good. So let's go forward. <coughs> Who's James Bond superior? M. Oh, super. M. <laughs> How many actors have acted as M? Judy, I know she's the only one I've seen. So here's the answer. Four of them. Four of them, and there's a trivia here. So we had the first ten, so Bernard Lee, he acted in eleven. And he had the second gentleman, Robert Brown. Now between Bernard Lee and Robert Brown, Bernard Lee died when they were filming For Your Eyes Only. So For Your Eyes Only is the only movie out of the twenty-five where you'll not see an M. There is no M coming in scene, but mentioned as a phrase. That's because they didn't have <coughs> Robert Brown ready to get into those shoes. That's a little bit of trivia for you. Good. Now, of course, you have got Ralph Fiennes. He's, of course, the M now. Anybody remembers his name? His real name in that movie. <coughs> Come on. He's Admiral Gareth Mallory. James Bond. Okay, good. Let's go further. Yes, Judy Dench. She is the only lady M till date. So we don't know if they will replace Gareth Mallory with another lady. Let's watch. Good. Now we have another one. Who designs gadgets? Q. Q. <coughs> How many actors? Two. Four. Three. Four. That's absolutely right. Ah, cross, yes, yes, yes. So now, here there's another funny part. Of course, we had Peter Burton who was the first one, then he didn't come back. And you had Desmond Lelwyn. He acted in most of the movies. Then you see this gentleman come here, John Cleese. He comes as Q and R in two movies. And then you had Ben Venture. So he's the guy who's now as Q. Does anybody know what is his real name in the movie? It's revealed only in two movies, and I can tell you the names. It's Dr. No, and the second one is a spy who loved me. He's Major Boothroyd. And apparently, Major Boothroyd is a true character whom Ian Fleming was consulting. And I'll tell you where it connects. So you have to hold on to your horses. Now, we get into our next segment, which is our table topics. So for the table topics. So for the table topics, we have another swashbuckler, a singer of the White Horse Masters Club. And when we asked him, what does James Bond remind him of? Now, this is another Saleh's brother. He said, <laughs> the fact that he's surrounded by beautiful Bond girls. Put your hands together for Toastmaster Manish. Saleh, you have competition. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Table topic, the rule is you will be getting topic here and you have to speak for the two minutes. The idea is you have to think on your feet. So, I would call upon TM Sandeep. The timing is one minute minimum. One minute thirty second Amber. Yeah. And then right is two minutes. Maximum is two minutes. Yes. For you the topic is if you are stranded in Ireland with a bond girl, would you like to stay back or would like to return home? <laughs> <laughs> For how long is the question? <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Pretty thought provoking. Uh, and yes, I wish an ideal world was a bit like that. But yeah, to answer the question, if I did get a chance to survive and live in an island with a beautiful looking girl, um, I would jump at the opportunity for sure. Uh, but for a few days. Right? I think uh, at the end of the day, as humans, we all have distractions, we have desires, we have needs, we have uh, the quest to sort of go out there and do it all. 
So yes, the video of being trapped on an island with a beautiful looking girl and seeing if that island has all that is to offer beyond her as well, uh, would be quite an interesting thought process because at the end of the day, you get to explore, try something new, you get out of your routine, and that's what I'm a fan of. If you're asking me and my personal nature, the way I am as an individual, I like to go out and get a few things done on a weekly basis. I like to, I, I, there's only one thing that I fear in life, and that's mediocrity. You know, living a very average life, doing the same things over and over again, living the mundane routine, and if I get a chance to do something out of it, that's me jumping right at it. So something like this definitely would be exciting. But at the end of the day, you obviously have a life and a family and a home to go back to. And I think that thought is more appealing than anything else. Uh, these temporary distractions can have a space and room in your life and give you that rush that you need. But at the end of the day, there's always someone who's looking after you, who, look, who you look forward to spending your time with. And I think that's something I would go back to after a few days having known that I've actually given it a shot and had fun in the process. So yeah, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sameer. Now I would call upon Toastmaster Meher. Thanks, Devi. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? So the topic is same for you. And you have to convince the audience you are a better choice for the same model. For the same model. Mr. Table Topic, thank you so much. The answer is absolutely not. I'm married. <laughs> Happily married for eight years, and my wife is actually filming me right now, so this could easily, easily escalate to levels unattainable of getting back from. But to answer your question, look, the situation is case by case. Are you single? Go for it. Are you married with kids? Maybe you're a bachelor looking to have some fun? Go for it. But if you're married, you have a family, there's something called morals. My mother, she's a queen. And I say this in public, proudly, because she always raised us with the notion of never break a woman's heart. Quick anecdote, I know I only have a couple minutes on this stage. My wife and I got married in under a year. Reason for this, she flew from Croatia, came to Canada, we met each other at the gym. We had some eye contact. <laughs> it wasn't an island, by the way. <laughs> uh, it was consensual. <laughs> we exchanged numbers and fast forward because I loved her too much. She did not want us to break up in that under a year. So given her visa situation, my circumstance, I married her. And I look, nine years till today, probably the best decision I ever made. Hence, my answer for you is be careful. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> Does that answer the question? Yes. <laughs> yes, very nice. I'll be wife, I'll be wife. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to call you guests now. Uh, Miss Jane. Toastmaster. Toastmaster. Yes. The topic for you is, who's the daredevil in your life? Table topic actually for me is a swash butler between my fear and my confidence. And uh, um, so that's why I joined Toastmaster to face my fear and overcome it. But at the end of the day, I, I wanted to share a story, by the way. Whenever I ask someone, like my boss, I ask her one time, boss, I need some amount, and I'll pay you next month. And she say, OK, I will transfer. And then another day, I ask her, I told her I was, I was crying that I broke up with my uh, boyfriend. And then just she simply say, remember one thing, 
your pants only have the rights for your tears. Go to Philippines, spend one week with your parents and enjoy, come back fresh. And then the other day, I asked her, I want to improve my public speaking. And then she said, I can't help you on that, but join Toastmaster and you may improve. And then I just realized that who believe that helping is doing service at the same time? Okay, so helping is someone something that you can help in so many ways. You can help financially. You can help by giving advices, just spend time with the person. And by giving some moral or be the bridge to, to help someone. And that is service. And how you measure your service is when you make someone happier than you found them. Make the place cleaner than you found, than you found it. And as a Toastmaster, when you make someone <coughs> become better speaker and better leader when you found them. So over to you. Thank you. Now I'm going to call a guest, Miss Dan. Dion, sorry. Hi. Hi. Hi everyone. Some tips you would like to give to James Bond is your topic. Oh. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, some tips I'd like to give James Bond. Um, Mm -hmm. Ooh, he, I, I think maybe getting tips from him, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a female's perspective, um, sorry for if I'm one-sided on this, but to kind of have a female version of a bond, <laughs> maybe if I'm if I'm talking about tips. Oh, sorry, guys, I'm trying. To, process but um, is there a certain number of tips or just in general? In general. In general. Um, Get married and retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that came to mind but then I went, okay, maybe. Um, Give us three. Okay, three. Tips. I'm just trying to think beyond what one would think but I'm probably over analyzing but maybe two main tips would be to um, uh, to probably have a more like a humanitarian type of approach. Sorry, that's really big <laughs> and a general aspect. And the second one would be um, second tip would probably have like a someone he could fight his battles with, maybe a woman. So those are two tips I think one can take into consideration. Thank you. I would call another guest, Mr. Ahmed. Yes. So the topic for you, what was your funniest or worst misadventure? Misadventure. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to expose me, huh? <laughs> um, funniest misadventure. <laughs> um, trying to be honest here. Um, <laughs> You can lie. Actually, <laughs> I think I don't have to. Nothing comes to mind. Um, what could be one? What could be a misadventure? <laughs> I don't think you could say there's a misadventure because any adventure is something that you learn from, right? So there's nothing, uh, I don't believe in something called a misadventure. You do something, um, it works out, Great. It doesn't. Greater. Because here you learned uh, 
hey, you didn't learn something, but when it doesn't work out, you learn why things don't work out, and then you improve. I would like another question, please. <laughs> yes, yes. Next time, next time. Should I guess? Yeah, just have time, yeah. Thank okay. you for your answer. You So, sorry for the delay. Uh, Toastmaster Sandeep came in at 1 minute 35 seconds. Toastmaster Mahem, 1 minute 39 seconds. Toastmaster Jem swashbuckled her way all the way through to 2 minutes and 3 seconds. Uh, our guest, Dion, 1 minute 45 seconds. And Ahmed just over the line, one minute and two seconds. So all speakers were qualified. Thank you. Voting? Yes. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Manish. Interesting questions and interesting answers by our table topic speakers. Now is the time for voting. All are qualified. So everybody can vote, including the guests. Go to www.menti.com. That's the code. Type in the code and vote for the best table topic speaker. Here you have 20 seconds to vote. Guest, are you able to vote? Shamnas? Yes. Good. So everybody's voted? Jatin? Okay, still taking down the number, okay. One seven two five eight seven one six is the minty code. Everybody can vote, and everybody please vote. Are we getting the votes? How many votes? Five only, guys, and we are 30 people, more, 30 plus. Please vote. Vote for the best table topic speaker. You can vote for yourself. This is conflict. Yes, yeah, so we have the mentee code up there. So please vote. All those who have not voted, please vote. All those who have voted, thank you so much. You can vote. Did you vote? Okay, very good. Moving on, we quickly move to the evaluations. Okay. And our first evaluator is... Toastmaster Amina, and when we asked her what uh, Bond reminds her of, she said the introduction, Bond, James Bond. So let's invite, what's your last name, sorry? Salma. Salma, Amina Salma, <laughs> to the stage. Put your hands together for Toastmaster Amina. So when this role was given to me first, so I thought it was easy, but now I feel like uh, not dying early, really. it is time to <laughs> So it is better for me. Uh, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and future Toastmasters. Uh, Sosh Buckler, E.M. Kesava. Loved your speech. It was pleasant listening to your speech. Especially, uh, it brought me memories of when I visited Singapore. I was just two years, but I still remember. <laughs> and um, I love the, the personal touch you had in your speech. That is, uh, your choices which you had to make to study. And then uh, your adventure uh, and uh, the food choices also. I love the way you share your pics. The person that is a personal touch. However, unfortunately, I didn't understand what was the purpose. It was not clear. And uh, there were no pauses. You spoke continuously. So I had to, you know, uh, really uh, catch up on your speed. So I uh, advise you that you do have pauses. Also, use the stage better. Yeah, we're just standing on one place. But overall, it was a good speech. You were clear, the speech was clear, the voice modulation was very good. So, keeping all of these things in mind, you will be a better speaker, a great speaker actually. 
But and uh, finally, I would also say that uh, if you have given a message to the audience, like how our uh, guest, uh, how our speaker said, Mr. P. M. Ali, who spoke to that you need to engage the audience, give a message. So, what exactly the emotion you want to emote in the end? So, yeah, thank you so much, and uh, thanks everyone. Happy National Day. Oh, <laughs> I told you, right? This is the soul is for me, so it's taking time. But uh, yeah, so the time is up now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thank you, Nimut. I love your uh, James Bond. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Toastmaster yeah. Mina. Yeah. And moving on to the next evaluator, we have Distinguished Toastmaster VP Menon. And when asked him what does James Bond remind him of, he said 2G. Any idea what 2G is? Guns and girls. So girls, <laughs> guns and girls. And he specifically said in that order. So put your hands together for Distinguished Toastmaster VP Menon. I don't think you need the mic. There's a reason why I'm using this. <laughs> Is there a way to clip this on? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, before I start the evaluation time, Fantastic job, Dosmas of the day. Uh, you know, he always manages to bring so much of information into the theme that he brings in. I still remember the last one about the historical places and now about James Bond. Yeah, well done. And I think Hashim left, but that was an amazing education session from Hashim. Okay, <clears throat> coming back to our evaluation for Dosmas to Santosh, and the timing starts now. Uh, you know, I like the way you opened. The speaker had a line in the opening to grab the attention of the audience. Anybody remembers what that line was? I didn't uh, uh, lie. I just lied once. Correct. I lied to someone once. So if you remember Hashim saying about attention grabbing opening, this is a way to grab attention in the beginning. Yeah, by, by, by that sentence. So the speaker opened the speech very well with that sentence. Then he moved down to the body of the speech, where he had a lot of personal stories. In fact, he had three stories. He spoke about his life um, with the, in the classroom, the teacher, um, from where the word mentor came up, the history of that word. Then he spoke about his mentor at work and about his mentor in Toastmasters. So he was a mentee to these three uh, people and his experiences with those mentors and then of course he moved on to the closing of the speech. Now what are some of the things, with reference to the objectives of the project, what are some of the things that I really liked? Um, very clear voice, yeah, very audible, um, used vocal variety to the extent that it was required, not overdone but very well. The pace of speech was very good, we could follow you, you know, not too fast, not too slow. Eye contact was there and there was absolute comfort for the speaker. I mean, the speaker was comfortable with the stage, which we could see and that's, he is a very confident speaker and that comes out. In terms of the body language, you know, his, his use of body language, in fact, his, his uh, hand gestures, very smooth and going with the flow of the speech um, and also the stage use. In fact, if you remember who walks along with you, you know, that was very nicely done. I used, I like the phrase under the umbrella for mentor, you know, that really enca encapsulates, that's a tongue twister, encapsulates the word mentor, you know, under the umbrella. <clears throat> and the conversational style of speaking that you have is something that I really liked in the speaker. Uh, what is a suggestion that I could give to the speaker which could help him? With reference to this particular speech, of course, the only thing that I could tell him is avoid thank you in the end. You don't need to say thank you. Rather, try to see how you can make the ending a bit more interesting for the audience. You know, Probably you could end with a message, 
uh, or or you could end with uh, a call for action you know like be the mentors so they can you can go out and help people whatever i mean you could think of something creative there finally santosh you are a swash buckler speaker yeah who has the potential to also be a swash buckling mentor so Ladies and gentlemen, now that we're done with our evaluations, uh, and, and, and sorry, I missed most important point. The reason I wanted to use this is use mic. <laughs> <laughs> It helps. So we we looked at how our speakers have done. So now let's look at uh, the timers report first, of course, before I go any further. Yes. So our first evaluator, T. Toastmaster Amna came in with a tiny bit of prompting at two minutes and five seconds, while distinguished swashbuckler VP Menon toastmastered his way through to three minutes and 13 seconds. So both evaluators are qualified. Great, thank you so much. Uh, can we have the Okay, let's have the voting first. For the, this is only for the toastmasters, of course, not for the guests. You have the menti code. The menti code remains the same. the word what is the word of the day so 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 let's see how have we performed with that let's call on the word master for the day toast master yana <laughs> i hope we i hope you pass the test you have four so i would like to thank each one of you because you were very engaged as soon as you heard the word you were clapping so very nice audience thank you so much The word was used four times, once now. Devi, our president, used it the most, it was six times. Uh, Toastmaster Hari Haram once, Toastmaster Bob uh, three times. I would like to acknowledge uh, our guest, Jem. During her table topic, she used the word once. Great job. Amina once. And Toastmaster Manon twice. Thank you very much. And I would also like to acknowledge Nisreen for her honesty. She stopped me during the break and goes, I don't remember the word, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> so honesty is also welcome. It was not easy word, <laughs> but I hope you will remember it and use it in your life. And one thing I would like to say to all of us here today, that just watching everyone overcoming the fear of public speaking, we all have a swashbuckler inside of us. Ooh. So let it just go out. And great job, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. We also have an outbound for now. Superb. So one of the most important things is the ornamentation of our language. Of course, you can dress well. But if you don't smell great, nobody's going to come close to you. So, grammar in, or grammar in, in, in our language is just like that. You may have the best forms of ideas. If you don't put it properly, people will not understand you. It's important to get the grammarian's report for us. So, to present the grammarian's mm -hmm. report, may I please call upon Toastmaster Rashid. Thank you so much. Hello. So, follow. Sir. Immediate. <laughs> Swat buckling is there with your ideas. Today it's working, so use it. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Toastmaster and uh, guest. Today my role is, I'm doing two roles actually. One is our counter, where we find some filler words. I have to find, pay attention to your speeches and find out how many ah words used. For example, 
ah, um, ar, well, so, like, but, repeats, so many words, filler word we use. So, I want to give some stats about this uh, filler word. Our president, DV, used one time ah, one time ar, and two th three times so. <coughs> Toastmaster of the day used two times so, and one time ar. Kesava used ten times, more than ten times, speaker one. I mean, I, I did not name actually, but I can just say speaker one and speaker two. Speaker two used three times so, and two times end. Timer used one time. Ah. Education session, we saw around five times so word used, filler word, word used. And um, in the table topic, speaker one used one time R, speaker two was fine, speaker three was also okay, speaker four used um word five times. Amina used one time um, three time, two times so, one time but, and one time and. Vipi Menon used three times um, one time end. So using filler word uh, you should avoid. As I directly said in the education session, you can pause, you can take a short pause instead of using <coughs> filler word. So try to do that, uh, it will bring a lot of improvement in your speech. And going to grammarian role, my second role was grammarian role, I found some small uh, correction. So the speaker one used they don't have electricals. Instead, they could have used electricity. So this is one word for electric, uh, speaker one. Uh, speaker two also said, uh, like for example, lot of guidance. Instead, he, he could have said, I got a lot of guidance. So this is how uh, it will improve this English. Who gives you? Who gives you? Who give you? Instead of who gives you? So the S was missing there. They want similar. They want similar people. We could have used. They want similar people. And uh, we also use but and pics. Instead of use pics, we could have used pictures or photograph, whatever. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I think this is all for, from my side. Yeah. So, one of the things with no. <laughs> one of the things that we have with with Toastmasters is to understand how have we performed in the meeting itself. That's that's a good that's a good gauge of how this club is progressing in terms of adding value to each of these members who are there with us because you're spending time, a fruitful evening that you could have had a nice time with your family, with your loved ones. So it's important to add value to each one of you who are sitting here and spending their time. So that can be given to us by one person who's been watching us all through from the time, possibly even before the meeting began. And that's none other than the general evaluator for the evening. The general evaluator for this evening is, is another friend of mine, and she was the past area director. I forget the number of the area number. Area 20. Area 20. So, so pardon me for that, for that ignorance though. Area 20. She is a swashbuckler when it comes to being an, a leader. And I know that she is a good one when it comes to evaluations. Those must be. right shook all of us with its theme and its poster so definitely in a positive way congratulations to DTC because always it creates curiosity before the meeting itself 
This is my privilege and honor to be an evaluator here in Dubai Toastmasters Club. Exactly one week before this meeting, our prompt, enthusiastic VP education, Toastmaster Nisha, gathered all the role players, started the role players group, provided the Toastmaster materials, how all this, each of the roles have to be played, uh, supposed to be done, all instructions are given. So by 24th, agenda was well set. Well done, dear Nisha, as VP Education. And kudos to our VP PR, Toastmaster Michal. He created the poster and circulated. So all preparation was done well in advance. Then let us come to meeting day today, this evening. When I came here, our great master, his name? Suketu Dev. Dani. Dani. Suketu Dev. Dani. He was there in the door with a smile and he gave me a name tag. So well done. Toastmaster, Green Master, well done. Now, sharp at 7, 17. Actually, our starting time was <laughs> 7, 15. But sharp, 7, 17. Oh, handsome, because I have to boost him up, because today I have to reach home with him. <laughs> He started his meeting as always and uh, reminded all of us about the coming National Day, rule and regulations of uh, Toastmaster meeting. So, great work. Thank well you. done, Toastmaster Sally. Then we come to our gorgeous president, Toastmaster Devi. So, she started, as always, started with a story. Well explained our Toastmasters, well explained the pathways, ask questions in between, introduce new member, guest introduction was done, everything done properly. But I felt this too much of information. And if you give a lot of information in one go, this a little bit difficult to digest for the newcomers. That's why I feel like a little bit pauses and you can reduce the content. Then, our word master. Jana Martin? Yeah. Hi, Toastmaster Jana Martin. You introduce the word in an innovative manner. You just showed up poster and the word Swish Bakla, I'm correct? Great. So she explained the word and asked everyone to repeat it. That's a great way to start. And I believe it is always better to show the word in front of uh, something we have to be done like a poster so that everyone will remember what the word it is. And round robin was done. Great work and well done with the report, the word report. So there was a perfect number, how, how many of you use this word, everything was done well. So well done. Hope to see with the role, new roles in the next meeting as well. Then you come to our speaker, Toastmaster Keshava. So, our evaluators there, so I, I don't have to speak much about the speaker. But I felt at the beginning, as our champion evaluator said, curiosity was a little missing, the starting. So, always, Keshava is not here. Yeah, hi, Keshava. <coughs> so, we have, let us work upon that, the next speech. Then for the Toastmaster Santosh, 
our champion evaluator is always already done, so I'm not going to that. Then our timer report. Toastmaster Robert. Robert, meticulous time report. Thank you for that. Congratulations. Then we had education session. He was a champion speaker, humorous speaker, winner. And other than how to make a great speech, he already showcased how to present a PPT, how it has been there with small words and pictures, how the message can be conveyed. So that is a learning session for all of us in many ways. Then our table topic master was there. I have written something about table topic, table topic master. Where it is, so many papers. <laughs> Tabletop master, where is it? Uh, hi. Simple topic, topics were very good, interesting topic. So you had the list of, list of speakers already with you, so you don't have to search for the speakers, well done with that. Few suggestions as a new, uh, new role player. I felt it is always better to explain what tabletop is, table topic is, what is meant by this, and explain the time mechanism, like you have to speak for minimum one minute, then there will be uh, time Green of light, yeah. light will be there. So explain very well, so guests will get an idea about this. Then when we invite the speaker, we have to give the topic two times, like greet the speaker with his name, like Toastmaster Santi, the topic, then the topic and Toastmaster Santi, and hand over, shake hand with the speaker and hand over the mic, stage. Then okay, sorry. Then we had evaluators. Toastmaster Amina, yeah. So, you have given improvement points, feedback, good points, well explained. As an evaluator, avoid excuses when we start. It's okay, everyone start at first time. We, are, we make mistake and we learn. So, always start without any excuses. Then, we, it is always because there was an example by our champion, uh, DTM Toastmaster, DTM VP Menon. First, we have to give points which we like, then, improvement points, then, we can have a summary. So, next time, we will do that. And we had an education session with DTM VP Menon, how to do this evaluation. So he's my mentor. So enjoying this moment as evalu his evaluator. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Then we had word master report. We already discussed about the word master. Then grammarian and accounter. So uh, for the TMOD, I believe, it's so always better to, I'm sorry, in between I'm telling, because it is always better to introduce these roles in the beginning. So everyone will get to know what a grammarian and dark order and everything it is. So, detailed report done by Toastmaster Rashid about the accounting, then grammarian report as well. He pointed out the misuses, misusages of words. Well done with that. At the same time, it is always better to do 
uh, count the good usages. What are the good usages? What will what went well as well? So next, our champion. James Bond. James Bond. <laughs> so he is a champion. He's a speaker. So he's a mentor for me as well. So. So we had a story. We are we are uh, film here. So how we, as Vimy Menon already said, how he can remember a lot of things, so many messages. I I have written a lot of things here, but I am not reading it because we already have all this idea now. As I already said, this um, and he introduced the role plays well, very well. And in between, when the speakers and uh, the TMODs were here in this podium, we could hear a lot of crosstalks. It is always better to avoid that. And it is always to have a grip on timing. Because uh, the G should have started on 9.17, but it started 10 minutes late, 9.27. It happens. When I already said we have to introduce the rock place in the beginning, but we we have and we are so lucky. We always we had a champion, DTM, Hari Haran as TMOD, education session with a champion, humorous speech. Oh, he is already here. I thought he went. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Hashim was there. Then. Our VP Menon. So this, and also we had another champion. He went, Sandeep. It was Sandeep. Yeah. Sandeep. <laughs> oh, it's red. So he's. Oh. Yes, sir, we are hoping that at least in the end he will show some video. <laughs> <laughs> so it is long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Well done, and uh, we will meet on the next meeting as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's get the, the voting done for the best role player. We should be using the same. Even if I have an audience of over 100, I won't. Okay, so finished voting, I hope? Yes. Okay, good. So, here's what, here's what we need to keep in mind. The next time you watch a Bond movie, there are some things that you see as gadgets. Right? This is the most famous gadget that he uses. The exploding pen was used only in one movie. Car remote. Car. Car. car remote, the car, yes. Car. Anybody can guess which are the cars that James was using? Aston Martin. Aston Martin is one, BMW is another. Mercedes, I see. No, Mercedes, no. Yeah? No. He's not driven it. Volkswagen. No. No, come on. Audi, no. So I'll tell you which are they. So he's driven all the Aston Martins from the DB3 to DB10. He's also used the BMW Li 750Li. He used a Z3. Now Z3 was used in GoldenEye, and the 750Li was used in Tomorrow Never Dies. He also uses one car, which is there in two movies, The Spy Who Loved Me, and another one, You Live Only Twice. That movie, or that car, is the Lotus Esprit. There's a beautiful story behind it. They were filming the movie, auditions were on. So the CEO of Lotus wants his car to be the James Bond car. So what does he do? He's designed a new Esprit, so he takes the car and just parks it outside the audition center and leaves. 
Alberto Barusili is walking and he says, oh my God, what, which car is this? And that becomes the James Bond car. So if you watch The Spy Who Loved Me, the car that becomes a submarine, that is the Lotus Esprit. Watches. How many of, which are the watches that James Bond has used? Omega. Rolex. Rolex, of, of course, 100%. Rolex. Rolex was definitely used, but is not used now. Which one is used now? Omega. Omega. Anything else? Any other? You would be shocked. And this is the shocker. Citizen. Not citizen. He <laughs> used... <laughs> Casio. Oh, no. Casio. Oh. Casio. <laughs> so... So there are some very weird things that happen in, the, in, in our world. And unbelievable stuff can impact a movie. 1963, in the Geneva Watch, in the watch, uh, Geneva watch Convention, sorry for that, <laughs> there is a technology that is displayed by Rolex. Rolex expects this technology to be the world leader. And for some reason, Rolex shelves it. Now what happens? During that convention, there are other companies watching it. And there are three companies that come up. Hamilton, Seiko, and Omega. That is 1963, when Rolex had 70% of the market share of luxury watches. In 1983, it became 7%. Because the technology that Rolex was using had become Stone Age. And that hit James Bond like crazy. Because in 1978, they dropped Rolex and picked up Hamilton. They dropped Hamilton and picked up Seiko. Seiko is the only Japanese brand that James Bond has ever worn. Shocking but true. And I don't know that there is another watch by name G-R-U-E-N. I don't know how do you pronounce it. <laughs> it U-E-N. Gruen Precision was the name of the watch used only in one movie, Diamonds of Forever. And last, Breitling was used only in one movie, Dr. No. So that's about watches of James Bond. I'll leave you there because it's just running over time. And I'll hand it over to our gorgeous presence. And my good old friend. Thank you, Mr. James Bond. So let's give a huge, huge, huge round of applause to our James Bond team. Now moving on to the awards and achievements. Let's see who's won what. There's a slight change there. Is the clicker? Okay, so the best role player goes to drum rolls. Congratulations. So proud of you. Thank you. Where is Ashut Master? Picture? Yes. Of course. Mm, that's the next one. Last one. Here, here. Sports Buckler! Thank you. Thank you. And the next, the best evaluator. Another swashbuckler, distinguished Toastmaster, VP Hannon. Congratulations. Can you come closer for the picture? Where is James Bond, you said? <laughs> Bond. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Then we have the first table topic speaker. And that goes to... All the way from Canada, Toastmaster, yes, Mehmet. The best speaker, swashbuckler of DTC, Santosh Nair.
done, my protege. Thank you. Zero zero eight of two for Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thank so much. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's congratulate all the first timers today. Toastmaster Yana was the, doing the role of the world master the first time. Toastmaster Nisreen, our shoot master, who's been all over the place doing this great. Toastmaster Vineet, our Total Topics master, who's done an incredible job, very good question. Toastmaster Bob, who's doing the time for the first time, and Toastmaster Rakshan, who's the Dravidian and our founder for the first time. Very good, congratulations. You're doing a fantastic job. More information. I know GE said a lot of information, but I have to give this information. Some announcements we had. So we had our club officers training in the last couple of days, and we are very proud to see that six out of seven have attended the training. The one who didn't attend, to our treasurer, Toastmaster Ati, he was he is traveling, so that's why he couldn't. But he will attend the makeup court, and we all seven officers would have completed the club officers training. Distinguished Toastmaster Hashim, please wait another two minutes. Then we have our court. No, go back. Go back. We have our contest, okay, I'm reminding you all again, on the 9th of January is our international contest and table topic contest. Start preparing, give your nominations to our VP Education, 23rd Jan is a humorous and evaluation contest. Then, after a very mind-blowing event of uh, our, um, the event, that last event that we had, team building event, so all the members have asked for more events, and for that we want to form an education, uh, sorry, an entertainment committee. So I'm inviting nominations, all those who want to be part of the entertainment committee, please do reach out to us. You all would be the entertainment committee, and you all would be organizing events for the club. Okay? And our next meeting is on 12th of December. We would be having Secret Santa that day. I hope you all know what Secret Santa is, where you will exchange gifts. So if you all want to participate in Secret Santa, all those who are attending, please give your names to our VP Education, Toastmaster Nisha. These are the pictures of the court that were attended in the last couple of days. Moving on, this is how we look at we look at our DCP points. Level 1, we have three members who have completed. That's Toastmaster Kaja, Toastmaster Santosh Nayar, Toastmaster Noora. Level 2, we have uh, Toastmaster Aati. Level 3, we have Toastmaster Sagar. And 4, we have Saleh, Nisha, and myself. With that, we are at DCP 6 points. And our next meeting is on 12th of December. This beautiful lady is at TMOD, Toastmaster Jayshree. The theme is Today is Your Day, and that would be a Christmas theme. So everybody would dress in Christmas colors, Christmas hats, Christmas themes. And please remember the Secret Santa. All those who want to participate, please give your nominations. Thank you so much. And with the power rested in me, I now adjourn this meeting. Can we have everyone over here for a picture, please? DTM, DP, man, and don't go, I'm going to show you the video. I created one, so I'll show you. I'll not go without that. Sorry, man. Uh, this is... Uh, yeah, this is that. Show us what? Leave it. Leave it? Hmm. Yeah, I'll put it in the car. Well done. Thank you. And can we have everybody doing the James Bond pose? Mm. Come on. Yeah, everything. Everybody with the James Bond. Mahal, Mahal. Come. Smile. No, everybody with the pose. Everybody with the pose. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> everybody with the pose. Guys, this is the pose, okay? So everybody with the pose. Had that before? Had that before. Had that before. Make me shoot him so many times. <laughs> <laughs>
Give me. I should have done this. <laughs> no, wait, wait. <laughs> Okay, now let's point all at uh, Saleh. <laughs> Everybody point at Saleh. Oh, yes. Oh, why the light is coming? One thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. I will not take picture. <laughs> Enlightenment. Oh, yes. TV, smile, please. I am not shooting you. Smile. One thing, one thing, just get forward. Yeah, Hurry, come in, Saleh. I'm fixing this. Let me fix this. Others are not getting what I need after this. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.